Hey guys, in today's podcast, we're gonna do something a little different. Today, we're gonna to have a special guest. Okay, so first off, uh, we do not have Jada today. We have my daughter, Kylie. Kylie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kylie, I'm his daughter. That was a grand introduction. I know. <laughs> All right, so let's first off, I know how old you are, but not everybody knows how old you are. How old are you? I am 13 years old. You are 13 years old. Okay. Um, now, really what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about and think about like self-defense from a kid's perspective. And I think we're going to look into some abduction prevention type stuff a little bit today. Okay. Let's be honest. Kylie, you have wanted to be on the podcast really since we started it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you're here and you're a little nervous. Maybe a little. <laughs> Why are you nervous? Because I've never done something like this before. <laughs> okay, but you've been in our videos. That's different. People are going to actually listen to it, not actually watch it. Okay, well, whatever logic. I don't know. All right. <laughs> so first off, why are like you, other than the fact Let's be honest, you grew up in this, okay? I was already, I've been teaching for quite a bit longer than you've been alive. You know, I started training not long after your mom and I got married. And then as we, you know, went along, I had my own school and my own facility and I started training people and doing everything else. And, and that started years before you were born. So you were kind of born into this, but outside of those reasons, why is it that you have an interest in this? Because you've taken more of an interest in this than just like, yeah, it's what we do because it's just the family <laughs> business. You know, you, you've, you've taken more interest in this and be honest with you, this excited me, I've liked that. My question to you is like, what has caused you to take more interest in it? Well, because I need to know how to defend myself, whether it be when I'm home alone or if we're at the store and you ask me to go get something on like the other side of the store. Or I never ask you to get I'm, anything from the other side of the store. I know. But maybe the next aisle yeah, over? Maybe yeah, that. Or if you just ask me to get something out of the car, I need to know how to defend myself. Okay. And, and I've really noticed now earlier this year is when we started doing all the abduction prevention stuff. Just recently, you and I actually did a live Facebook live training uh, for people, just like a little 30 minute like live seminar um, on abduction prevention specifically for kids. Um, and I think that went well, uh, but really kind of the thing I'm curious about at the moment is last year, I had gone through the training and to actually be able to like put out abduction prevention type stuff, start teaching that type of stuff. I've been, I've been doing martial arts and self-defense stuff for a very long time. You know this, but there are certain things that are eye-opening even for people that have been in this type of thing for a long time. And for us, it was the abduction prevention. Your mom told me for a long time, say, look, we have got to do this but I'm a type of person, I don't want to just make something up. Uh, I wanted to actually like get training from real people who have really dealt with this and, and really understand it and not just deal with people's theories. Okay. Um, my question to you is though, when I was doing this and just all the stuff that we got and was looking through, you had this big interest spike in this. So you started looking over the materials that I was doing. You started, you know, reading about it on your own. You even, you know, sat down and wrote a blog. What sparked that in you to be past your normal, just like, hey, you know, I grew up in martial arts. I love this type of stuff. I do this as a sport, but now you see all of this like other stuff and you're just like really driven. And I mean, it excites me. I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of enjoy it. But it, just to see you kind of really driven on that, what spiked that? What caused that? Well, I guess when you start going through it, it just kind of hit, I guess, that these things actually do happen. They don't actually happen in movies. They happen in real life. Yeah. And I don't really want kids to go through stuff like that. 
because I think you said in one of our seminars, 95 or 85, I don't know how you said it, percent of the time, they don't come back. Yeah. And it, and it like hit me when you started going through that stuff, and I don't want kids to go through that. Yeah. Yeah, the percentages are not, are not good. And I think the actual percentage there is, yeah, like 85% of the time, if somebody goes away with somebody, they don't come back. Um, Whether it be adults or kids. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's have a little bit of fun here. And I'm just, uh, obviously, I know the stuff because, you know, you are my daughter and you are with me. Don't yawn while I'm talking. Am I that boring? <laughs> I'm just tired. You woke me up. I was not ready to wake up. Okay. So anyway, obviously I know this stuff because you are my daughter. You're with me every single day. Uh, but just for the sake of everyone else listening here, tell a little bit about like your journey in the martial arts and self-defense stuff. Well, I basically started doing karate when I was three. And up to like I was eight, I liked doing the sports part of it because I like doing tricks and stuff. And then up till recently, I, it, like I said, it hit to me where I really want to do the self-defense stuff. So I've gotten to the point where I really like the reality-based self-defense thing. And I've basically been exposed to it because I've been editing all of our videos. So I think I've been kind of exposed to it. Mm -hmm. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Just slightly. Yeah. Um, to up the point to now where I'm actually helping teaching the kids seminars and helping out the women's self-defense seminars. Now I'm going to go up with you and train with a trainer to become a certified assistant pistol instructor. At 13 years old. At 13 years old. Yeah, that's actually the minimum age that you have to be in order to do this. And uh, she's been training really hard. It's been kind of fun to see her in, in this respect where it's a situation where she's learning from someone that is not me. Uh, and she is working really hard to get all of these things in so she can do that. And I love to see the drive in that as well um, because she's learned other things from people that are not me. But when it's come to martial arts and self-defense and everything like that, most of what she has done has been through me. So, <laughs> so um, this is kind of a different thing. So you've got all of this stuff, okay? And I know you're only 13. Years. I get it. You're only 13 years old right now. But you've got all of this stuff, all right? You, you've done the sport karate stuff, and you've had fun with that. And, and now you've gotten into a lot of the reality-based self-defense stuff. And, and even help with teaching a lot of the kids' seminars have helped me multiple times with kids' seminars. Every time we do a kids' seminar, you're there. Um, you help with the women's self-defense seminars. You help with the family-safe self-defense seminars. Um, you even help with the teen and college seminars that we've done uh, because, you know, you're able to be there and kind of be kind of a teen as well, uh, even though you're just barely a teen. Uh, hey! <laughs> so anyway... And, and now you are, are doing this certified apprentice pistol instructor thing. Uh, my question is, where does all this kind of stuff lead? You have other interests that are not martial arts. You know, you, you're really good and really talented at like video editing and all this other stuff. And you have interest in doing all these things artistically and doing things with video and everything. But my question is, knowing you're 13, Okay, so I'm not going to hold you to this, anything, whatever you say. Uh, but my question is, like, what, what do you see happening in the next 10 years in your life with all this? Do you, are you going to go, like, the next three years and then go, Psh, and throw it all away? Or, or like, what, what, at this present moment, and uh, this is not scripted, by the way. I have no idea what she's going to answer. Uh, at this present moment, in the next 10 years, like, what, what are you thinking? I kind of want to do all of it because I love editing, I love cry, I love self-defense, and I kind of love shooting, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you plan on kind of like using a lot of these things career-wise, or is it just like these are your hobbies and they are going to stay your hobbies, or like what's going on with that, that brain of yours? <laughs> As a career, I like editing, but I want it to be like for fun like for side hustle or something like that. 
Gotcha. And then, like, the rest of the stuff is my passion. I want to do it for the rest of my life, as far as right now. So, um, like, the martial arts and the self-defense and the shooting yes. and all that other stuff? Yes. That's what you want to do? Yes. Okay. At least at 13? Yes. I mean, you know. I, I realize that could change. And like I said, I'm not going to hold you to that. <laughs> I was just kind of curious. So I thought, hey, let's put you on spot right here in the podcast and ask. <laughs> 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 do you have, like, other plans? Are there other things that you really want to get into? Well, ever since I've watched Fixer Ripper, I kind of like designing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just, like, for whenever it hits me. Okay. okay. Like when I redid my room from yellow walls to gray walls. Gotcha. I was a Winnie the Pooh lover. <laughs> Up to the point of like 10 or something like that. <laughs> okay, so you say like your, your passion lies with the martial arts and self-defense and the shooting and every, every, things that keep people safe. Um, so do you have like interest and thoughts of expanding on that type of stuff? Like, do you have, like, okay, for me, last year it was... I was already into a lot of the other things, aspects of this, but we went into abduction prevention. We went into, we're now offering like concealed carry permit classes. We're doing all of these other things now that we were not doing before this year because I wanted to delve deeper into that. My question to you is, is this like certain aspects of the martial arts or self-defense or anything? Because you just think, oh, martial arts, there is just this huge wide swath. And you've, you've played in a lot of the rings of the, the huge wide swath. You, you know, I have too, and just, I don't know. You know, so you, you've done the sport karate form stuff. You've done um, point sparring at tournaments. You've done like continuous sparring at tournaments. You've done, you know, all the fighting stuff at your age anyway. And then, you know, then now you've gotten into like the reality based stuff and, and, and all that type of stuff. And then now shooting. But the question that I have for you in this respect is like, what, like, do you have plans or thoughts of going further into any of those areas or maybe a new area of martial arts? Self-defense. I really like teaching that because people mm -hmm. need to know mm -hmm. how to defend themselves in a real life situation because like I said before, these things just don't happen in movies. They happen in real life mm. and stuff like that. So. And stuff like that. Yeah. So self-defense is really kind of where you want to, yeah. is, is like, where you find to be the most important thing. Yeah. Okay. Like hand to hand, you want to get into some knife and stick stuff. You want to shoot things. You just answered yes to all of them. You, well, no, you just nodded your head to all of them. You realize <laughs> this is a podcast. Oh, People yes. can't see your yes. head nodding yes. up and down. Yes. I oh. like to joke about hearing your brain rattle, but they can't actually do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna like wrap up now. This one's probably gonna be a little shorter than most of them, uh, but that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, my question to you as we wrap up though, is like, as a 13 year old, what is the like, best piece of advice that you can give to other teens and kids when it comes to their self-defense? Always be aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of your surroundings. Okay, what does that look like from the perspective of a 13 year old girl? Well, say we're in Walmart parking lot because everything bad happens at Walmart parking lot. We're walking. I'll argue with you there. Yeah. We're walking to the store and then you're on your phone glued to it, the game or uh, answering a question or something. I don't think I'd do that walking into Walmart. This is just if you haven't been doing karate or teaching it for 20 years, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I oh and I'm looking around and I notice a guy following us weirdly in other words he's like following our every move mm -hmm. and not just walking to the store so I nudge you to go over like move over a little bit and then if he's still there then I do the spatial awareness drill hey do you need anything and then I notice him so he ran away now that brings up a really good thing. Okay, you help instruct with our kids stuff. So now, if a kid is approached by an adult, okay, and, and I know I said we was only gonna do one more question, but yes. 
if uh, this one's too good not yes. to do right now because yes. you brought it up. All right. If an adult is approached by an adult, the first thing we do is to do that awareness thing. Hey, hand up, palm facing out, acknowledge their existence. Hey, do you need anything? Can I help you? Anything like along those lines. That lets them know that you know that they are there. And a lot of times we've even had situations, and I'm, I don't know if I've shared it on the podcast before, but I know I shared it at the seminars where I had a lady uh, putting groceries in her car at Walmart parking lot, of course, and some dude starts walking toward her. She was not really aware beforehand, and then she picks up on him, so she really quick jumps into position, hands up. You know, it's, it's, if, you, if you're listening, it's not anything real confrontational. It's getting a hand up in between the two of you. It's having your palm facing forward. It's making, you know, some type of contact with them like, you know, oh, do you need something? Can I help you? Anything along those lines. That will usually stop them. And in that case, that lady or that guy that was walking toward that lady, like turned and walked off the moment she made contact. Uh, if they continue to push forward in an aggressive manner, that's when we get the other hand up and yell stop and all this. That's the way you deal with it if you're an adult and there's another adult. But with kids, that's not the way you deal with it, is it? No. Okay. Uh, why don't you explain to the listeners like how you deal with that as a kid? Well, if you're a kid and someone is asking you, hey, can you find my dog? Why is an adult asking a kid for help? Yeah. And if they want you, if they keep on like pushing it and pushing it, then that's when you yell, stop! Real loud like that. Yeah. So you kind of, you kind of uh, kill that space where we give them as adults, we kind of give them a little benefit of a doubt with a, hey, can I help you kind of thing. Where with kids, we need to be very direct very quickly. Yeah. Now, do you, as an adult, you might stand your ground. As a kid, do you ever stand your ground? We don't stand our ground. You need to back up and make space in between. Um, something that we say in our kids' safe seminars is they have to be at least four steps away right. before you can get away. If it's one step, then they'll grab you right off. If it's two steps, they'll grab you right off again. If it's three steps, likely they'll grab you right off, right off, off again. But if it's four steps, you're likely to get away and get to some place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So with a kid, we want to make sure that we never teach the kids to like stand their ground against an adult. You know, if an adult coming up and they put their hands up and they tell them to stay back, they, you know, what do they say? I don't know you. You're not my dad. You're not my mom. Get away from me. There we go. Like any of these type things. Okay. And it might come across as rude at times. And I know we as people don't want to be rude, but what we have to remember is that we want our kids to be safe. And a person who is a predator who is looking for a child uh, will say most anything. And unfortunately, we've seen lots of videos uh, that is just really, really scary in that respect where they will say anything to a child. Uh, you know, come, you know, hey, come here, play with my dog. Uh, you know, we would always talk about the candy from strangers thing and that's the one that usually gets out there. Uh, I think actually what we might do is you or I, or maybe it might be something when like maybe I'm gone because I will be gone a couple of weeks. Um, or I won't be available for a podcast anyway. Uh, so, you know, maybe so something like me and Jada or you and Jada can do yeah. uh, where you're going to talk about maybe some of the common ploys because everybody talks about don't take candy from strangers. And I was actually just a guest on another podcast. And that was one of the things they said, hey, you know, what's the best thing to tell our kids? Um, and that, that was the thing brought up that they said, don't take candy from strangers. Uh, the fact of the matter is it goes much, much deeper than that. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, either you and I can do one together or you can come back on and do one with Jada and you two can talk about the common ploys that actually people use because I think that would be a great topic for um, one of the podcasts. Yeah. So, All right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. This has definitely been a different kind of experience. Can I exit out? Yeah, that's fine. We didn't mention it, but just remember... That whole Atomic Bear thing, yeah, they are still really good friends of ours. If you go to theatomicbear.com and you look at any of their non-lethal self-defense tools, their tactical pins, their self-defense knives, their tactical flashlights, any of their stuff, anything they have on the site, if you put that in your cart, you can use the code IMPACTDEFENSE 
at checkout and that's going to get you an extra 20 percent off is, and it also goes back and helps us out as a podcast as well is the impact defense all caps or lower case, lower case? you know I, I think it's all caps but i don't know that it matters it's just one word just remember that part and i think you're probably safe but that that's a good point i hadn't thought to bring that one up <laughs> so anyway guys thank you very much look around be aware stay safe and we'll see you in the next podcast see you guys Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefensenc.com. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard.